Hello, and welcome to Catholicism in the Car. My name is Parker Zerbo. Today, I want to talk about, briefly, um, an overview of Catholic spirituality as it has been uh, historically conceived of. And, and this, this goes back, I mean, most famously, I would say, to uh, St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross. Um, but even... Uh, there were, there were even other people who kind of delineated out, parceled out uh, various stages, you could say, of the spiritual life. Um, like St. Bonaventure in his uh, journey, uh, of his, excuse me, St. Bonaventure in his mind's journey to God. And then, uh, more recently, uh, Garrigou Lagrange, uh, he was a French Dominican priest, um, set out what is probably the most systematic uh, laying out of the spiritual life. Um, and he, he kind of compiles a lot of different things from a lot of different uh spiritual writers throughout Catholic history. There are also um, other writers such as um, St. Peter of Alcantara, uh, also Francisco de Osuna. Um, these are all, both of them are around the time of Teresa of Avila and John of the Cross. Um, and there have, there have been countless others. I, I'm not super familiar with anybody before the Middle Ages who set these things out. I'm not, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. It probably does. I'm just ignorant of it. Um, I haven't looked into it too much. Um, but today I'm going to focus on the spiritual life as set forth by Father Garrigou Lagrange. Uh, and he takes a, a three-tiered approach to this. And what this is, is basically it's, it's a, it's a, Systemize, systematizing, I think would be the word, systematizing of our relationship with God. Where this starts, of course, is when the person has virtually no relationship with God uh, and they are in either a state, um, an, a state without sanctifying grace, uh, like they haven't been baptized, or they have been baptized, but they're in a state of mortal sin. So this would be the base. Um, and, and of course, there are varying degrees for all of this. Um, you know, people, certain actions can bring one even further away from God, you could say. I mean, how can you get much further away from God than uh, being in, in mortal sin? But th there certainly are degrees of this. I mean, murder is worse than uh, fornication. Fornication is worse than, uh, you know, I don't know, probably perjury, you could say. Um, anyway, so you start off, the person starts off in a state of mortal sin. And this first stage, out of these three stages, is called um, the stage of purification. Um, the stage of purification, where the person is trying to purify themselves of, of mortal sin, basically. Sin that will break their relationship with God. Um, and, and creating the basic uh, habits of virtue. Um, and the way that Gary Lagrange sets this out is that um, as this person uh, purges themselves of their mortal sins, um, breaks these habits of sin, and creates new habits in their place of beginning virtue, 
they will get closer and closer to God. And throughout this time, there's generally a lot of physical consolation or spiritual consolation um, that makes itself known in a in a more physical way. Like the, the person gets, um, say, a lot of fuzzy feelings while they're praying. Like like it it's um, it, there's almost a, a physical response that the person has to God during this time as they get closer and closer to God, as they move further and further away from mortal sins um, and start purging themselves even of their venial sins in a certain, in a, in a certain way. Um, and God kind of woos them. It, it's like the, the dating um, phase in a relationship, uh, the honeymoon phase, you could say, where there are lots of emotions going on, um, and the person really feels uh, spiritual desolation much more acutely uh, because of the amount of spiritual consolation that they also receive. Um, now, this, this spiritual consolation doesn't necessarily come from God. Uh, it could certainly be a product of the mind, of, uh, of uh, like a psychological effect, basically, um, now, Gary Lagrange doesn't really go into this, but uh, I think that's quite plausible for a lot of it, is that since, since there is a, a bodily response with these types of consolations, um, you know, there, there's, there's bound to be a psychological element to them, not, not purely the action of God, you could say. Um, anyway, so as the person gets closer and closer to God during this stage, um, God slowly weans them off of off of those consolations to the point where they get to what John of the Cross calls the dark night of the senses, uh, which is a time where God is purifying the senses of the person. So purifying the person from attachment to these more physical bodily consolations that they've been given during prayer so that they can pursue a, a purer uh, relationship with God and, and not be um, focused upon the consolation that they receive. Um, so it, it prepares them for the next stage, which is called the illuminative stage. So you have the purgative stage and then you have the illuminative stage. Um, and this illuminative stage is characterized by... Um, illuminative prayer or infused infused prayer uh, and we're gonna have to pick this up where I left leave off uh, within the illuminative stage.